Welcome one and all fellow fans of Clash of Clans from around the world, it is your host Galadon and in today's episode we have some incredible world championship caliber gameplay, a live commentary on an attack that is just about to take place and of course, did you ever really, really, and I mean really, want to change the name of your clan? I mean, so badly that you would spend money, that you would spend gems to do it? Well, let's look into that. And one thing is for sure, you don't have to spend any money or any gems to subscribe to the channel. It is a little act that goes a long way. And as long as you're there, you could always turn on notifications, maybe leave a like on the video, even leave a comment. Now, if you did want to spend money, if you do find yourself in the Supercell shop, make sure that you take part in the gift from Supercell to all content creators, and that is using the creator code. It doesn't cost you anything. It is quick and easy and painless. And uh, yeah, okay. So was that a uh, shout out, right? Okay, let's move on. Let's talk about what Tribe Gaming is doing right here and some fun attacks with, yes, you can see on the right-hand side, it is the Flame Flinger rolling in and annihilating this town hall. So much fun to watch when the Flame Flinger gets the job done, even post change, nerf, alteration, uh, balancing, whatever you want to call it, the Flame Flinger still can solo town halls left and right, and it is. And you can see right here the town hall just about to get annihilated as the opposite side of the base. That's right, it is not an air attack. You've got super bowlers rolling in, and they are going to help annihilate. And yes, okay, so check out the town hall poison bomb sitting there so lonely by itself, doing nothing to nobody. You gotta love it. Okay, well, actually, that's not completely true because if you watch the right-hand side of the screen, the hog riders are going to take a stroll as the poison pulsates. Luckily, it dissipates, and they do not. They roll in and take out the single Fargat Inferno as the rest of this attack is obviously pretty much going to plan. Archer Queen on the eagle. Everybody else... Wait, where is everybody? Oh, there's... The, there's not a lot left. Okay, but as you can see, it was enough. You got through the key defenses in the core, and although we've lost all of our Super Bowlers, everybody that is remaining, the heroes around the outside, you've got one more freeze spell, you've got the Royal Champion ability, Fluxy gonna take this base down from the clan that, that, that wants to change its name. Now, I will tell you this, I don't know if this is the exact clan name, but I will say that I have had comments from players in clans that are named the same two words, that wanted to change the name of their clan. So I don't know if it's this clan specifically, but obviously you can see the reason they want to change it is because they've got an apostrophe in the wrong place, right? Yes, okay, so the possessive lovers is not correct English here, and it just doesn't make any sense. So obviously that would be the only reason anybody would want to change their name, right? because you love Clash of Clans and you just want to let everybody else know in the whole world that, hey, I love Clash of Clans and I don't see anything wrong with that. Okay, so let's move on to, this is another recorded attack, but it was against the number one base of that clan there and it was a fully maxed out base. It is, of course, another air attack, which is, yes, continuing to dominate, but hey, I'm not complaining, totally good with it. But the third attack of the day, we will watch a live attack. Now, speaking of watching live, I thought I would give you guys a couple of interesting anecdotes about the Helsinki headquarters of Supercell. Did you guys know that there used to be four huge TV screens that broadcast live attacks pulled out of the game randomly so you might have actually been being watched at any moment in time by one or more Supercell employees as you were conducting your Clash of Clans attack, thinking that you were alone Yet, there were actually people that designed the game watching you attack. It's true. Also, right by the front door as you walked into the offices of Supercell was this big giant TV screen projecting little colored dots that showed when a player logged on to each of Supercell's most popular games. Now, this was really, really cool because you could actually see the time zones as the day went on. Different areas of the world would wake up and start logging on. You could also see little individual dots like one guy way out in the middle of nowhere who happened to log on to his Clash Royale account or Clash of Clans or Boom Beach. It was actually very, very cool to see. Now, of course, Supercell has since moved offices and I actually have not had a chance to visit the new office. I hear it is amazing. It is in an entire building now for Supercell. I got to go 
23 times, 23 visits pre-COVID to Supercell and Helsinki, Finland, which was amazing. A lot of the really early Clash events actually were filmed at the Supercell headquarters building. They had a separate area where they just filmed all sorts of events and live streams, but eventually, obviously, things got just too big and too professionally made to squeeze it into the Supercell office. Although I'm guessing this new building could probably house just about anything they wanted to. Uh, but yeah, I haven't had a chance to go. But when I go, I promise to share the stories and the photos with you guys uh, when we check that out. But Supercell, man, it is crazy to see how much they've grown. Yet the Clash of Clans team is still only about a dozen people. That's right, you've got uh, somewhere in the realm of, you know, 8 to 16 people that are dedicated to Clash of Clans, keeping it going, getting the updates together, and uh, we're definitely looking forward to another one of those soon. Okay, let's get into the live attack. Here we go. We've got Ricky Rez from Tribe Gaming rolling in against S Loves R from COC Lovers. Okay, here we go. So the blimp is going to roll in, and you'll notice it drops right on top of the town hall as we zoom in. You can tell that there's definitely some sneaky action going on right there. The minions, but underneath, sneaky goblins as the town hall gets chewed up and taken down for the first star, taking the poison bomb out of the picture, and now the remainder of the base can get picked apart. But also notice what has happened here. It's the clan castle coming out, and also there's a funnel. The archer queen is most definitely going to move up towards the 12 o'clock side of this base. In go some strategic balloons to take out archer towers on the outsides. And that is exactly what these pros do. They are planning every single building, every single troop. And of course, yes, the town hall going down also provided an amazing funnel to direct the archer queen who does not have any healers. She only has her unicorn with her. She's going to try to get max value on the way up towards the top of the base. Again, this is an air attack, so watch for those air targeting defenses to get targeted themselves. And a skeleton trap down there to distract the scatter shot. That's going to make sure that the royal champion gets in and check out the value right here. Air defense, expo, scatter shot, wizard tower, multiple air targeting defenses taken out, and a secondary funnel. Notice that now the royal champion and the archer queen have indeed funneled the remainder of the attack, and now the royal champion has funneled the archer queen back into the core of the base where she can take out the single target inferno as the balloons work their way down the right hand side and the barbarian king finally coming in down the left and this means that ricky rez's troops are not going to need to face the scatter shot or the air defense on the far left side of the base because the archer queen is indeed going to survive long enough to get them both out of the way. And notice the impeccable timing of the hero assault on the left hand side as the air troops move in from the right hand side taking down the archer queen. Another haste spell goes down for the balloons as they wipe out the remaining air defense on the left hand side. Yes, that's right. The king and the queen have done it. They wiped out everything that could harm an air offensive from the left. The final freeze is almost overkill and the final invis is definitely overkill. You guys remember the recent video? What happens when you invis the last building? Maybe Ricky Rez is part of the Galafam because he uh, trolls just a bit, drops the invisibility spell down, and finally completes the overkill three-star. Look at all of those troops just standing around, just annihilated this base, and that is what Tribe does to most of its opponents. A fun war to watch, even more fun to watch when the attacks are live. We go and check out the final results, 15 to nine. Clash of Clans lovers don't love Clash of Clans enough, but maybe they can get their name changed in the future. I have suggested to Supercell that we allow clans to change their names like once every year for a small gem fee. What do you guys think? Let me know down in the comments. Thank you, Galafam, for sticking around all the way to the end of the episode. You know you are the true hashtag Galafam, and that is why I love, think about, and appreciate every single one of you every single day. So get out there, make the best of the rest of your day, be kind to other people, animals, and the planet, and I will see you back here again tomorrow for more full attacks. Galadon, I like the live attacks better. You should do more of those. Mm-hmm.